Hi there, Steve Kaufman here again. Uh, time to do a video. Uh, I put up uh, some of these interviews that I've done with uh, people like Luca, Moses, uh, Richard, um, and Felix. Uh, very often people say, um, do one in this language or that language. Um, or they ask for subtitles. And so far as the subtitles are concerned, I simply don't have the time to do them. So there won't be subtitles. Uh, if you have specific requests, uh, maybe people can vote on them, uh, what language they want to hear, who they want me to talk to. Uh, people have also uh, suggested that I speak to Professor Argelies. I'm going to try to do that. Maybe someone can help me make a connection there. Um, so, uh, if those are popular, I'll continue to doing them. I think they're great because, you know, before the YouTube, we had no idea that there were so many people out there that could speak so many different languages and I'm sure that the few people that I've spoken to are just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there's many, many more. Uh, you know, as I've said before, once you get past your second language and your third language, every successive language becomes easier to do from many points of view, including, and this is the subject of my discussion today, including the um, aspect of pronunciation. I certainly worked harder on getting my pronunciation uh, you know, uh, as close to native as possible in, say, French and then Chinese than I have done in subsequent languages. Because I think that, that the brain gets more comfortable, gets more used to different sounds, a wide range of sounds, that uh, the more languages we learn, the, uh, that control that the first language exercises on your brain becomes watered down as you're exposed to a greater variety of sounds and even structures and so forth and so on. Now, the question is, is it realistic? Is it even a smart thing to do to, to try to sound like a native? Okay. Um, now, as I've often said, you know, language learning is all about enjoying it. So if you enjoy trying to sound like a native, by all means, you know, do so. Uh, but I think that the idea of trying to sound like a native you know, at two levels. If it's your goal, in other words, it's the model, like I would like to swing a golf club like Tiger Woods, that's fine. If you actually expect to sound like a native uh, or expect to hit the golf ball like Tiger Woods, uh, I think that's unrealistic uh, and I think it's a distraction. Uh, I have, other than people who grow up bilingual from you know, at least their teens, if not early childhood. I can't think of many people I speak to in English who sound like a native. Um, there was one fellow that I listened to on Anti Moon a number of years ago who I thought was really good with his American accent. Uh, we had a fellow at our forum at Link from Russia, from St. Petersburg, whose, whose English was very close to native. And you have to listen closely, but inevitably, something will give them away. Uh, you know, it's possible that if I phone a Japanese restaurant uh, or a French restaurant or a Chinese restaurant and I ask for a table and there's lots of dishes clanging in the background that the person on the other end of the phone may think that I'm a native or won't even ask himself or herself the question. But if I get in a conversation with someone, they will know that I'm not a native. Um, you know, Luca, who sounds to me like a native in German, French, Spanish, uh, doesn't sound like a native to me in English. So, um, you know, is that because he's better in those other languages or is it because, you know, the only real test of whether you sound like a native is whether a native thinks you sound like a native. And uh, as I say, I rarely hear anyone Yet the odd, very bilingual person, especially in, in Quebec, people who have grown up surrounded by English. Uh, I mean, the, the coach of our professional hockey team in Vancouver, Alain Vigneault, I mean, he, he sounds to me just about like a native, but you can kind of pick out a few things that are a little different, but he's essentially, he sounds like a native, but he's been living in English for a long, long time. Uh, the idea that you can sound like a native in several languages, I think, is, is highly unlikely. It's also a distraction because... Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, um, I, the other day someone put on our forum at Link, a, a, a link, 
to uh, a certain Mr. Vaughn who runs language schools in Spain, and I'll put the link up on my blog. He speaks Spanish flawlessly. I mean, his use of words is excellent. Um, you know, I was just in awe of his Spanish. But I can tell that he's not a native, and I know that Spanish people can tell that he's not a native. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't detract from his Spanish in any way. I mean, Henry Kissinger spoke with an obvious accent, but he used the language very well. So, to me, you know, speaking like a native, uh, A, it's highly unlikely that you're going to achieve it. So it's nice to have as a model, you know, reach for the sky. Uh, but it's highly likely that you are going to achieve it. It's far more important, in my mind, to have a, a, a good command of the language. I mean, if you go and talk to someone and in the first five seconds they think you're a native, but after... I mean, you're not... You, you know, you, we don't use the language just to communicate in five-second bullets. Uh, we want to have a genuine exchange. Uh, quite, often, quite honestly, if I'm communicating with someone in the language, I don't care whether he thinks I'm a native. Uh, I want to have a good, uh, you know, conversation with the person. So the impression I create in the first five seconds of the conversation uh, really doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me whether someone in a restaurant with enough background noise thinks that I'm a native speaker of Japanese. It really doesn't matter uh, when I'm with Japanese people. I just want to communicate. And another thing, too, is that so much of language learning is, is about discovering the language discovering the culture, learning about the country, learning about the history, discovering the language, uh, learning to understand the language. So much of, of language learning is taking it in. Uh, language is not uh, a performance sport where we're judged on how, you know, how, how good the dive was in diving or, you know, like figure skating. That's not what it is. It's, it's understanding, discovering, exploring, and communicating. So, uh, unless you have such a bad accent that the native speaker can't understand you, uh, trying to imitate, I mean, as I say, yes, it's the model, but we don't expect, we don't expect to achieve it. Uh, now, we would all like to improve our accent to some degree, and so what can we do? And some people say you should sing. If you like singing, sing. I, personally, I don't do that, but there's obviously nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, one thing that I found useful was, you know, listening and then recording myself and then comparing initially with words and then with phrases and then with paragraphs and then putting a lot of emphasis on intonation. As many people point out, intonation is very key. There's this word prosody or whatever. I don't use it because I don't like strange words that I've never come across before, but intonation works fine for me. Rhythm, music, intonation, the flow of the language. Uh, I think a lot of, you know, uh, listening and, and recording and, and comparing can help us. Uh, as well as a lot of a lot of listening. Period. I think language learning, as I've said before, I made a few notes here because I was I was working out while listening to Czech, and yet thinking about this thing. And then I'd get off the treadmill and scribble down some notes, get back on my treadmill while the Czech podcast was blurring in the background. But uh, what else did I say here? Yeah, language learning is more of a holistic thing. It's listening. It's reading. It's discovering. It's speaking. It's working on vocabulary. It's working on a number of things including intonation and rhythm. And the more of all of these pieces that, you, that start to come together, the better you are in the language. And probably the better your accent will become. And some people will do better than others in accent. Uh, but it, it, to me, to, to try and deliberately you know, attempt to sound like a native or to claim that you sound like a native, uh, to me, as I say, is just a distraction from language learning. What else did I have to say? Yeah. I mean, the main thing is, I want people to communicate with me. I want to be able to speak well enough in terms of my accent, in terms of my use of language, that the native speaker doesn't make any special allowances. The, ba the native speaker doesn't say, I'm talking to some foreigner here who has trouble expressing himself and I can't understand what he's saying. I want the native speaker to just say, this is Steve X. It doesn't matter what his you know, nationality or language of origin is, we're communicating. And he has something to say that's of interest, and he's able to express himself. Or he, what he says is dumb, and I'm going to tell him he's dumb. But either way, we are communicating. So, I mean, basically, there you have it. I mean, uh, you know, Richard and I both speak French very well. Richard Simcott, as does Luca, better than, I'm, both of them better than I do, I'm sure. But um, I don't think people would, I can't speak for Luca because, um, I don't know, he might 
be taken for a native. I don't know. I don't think Richard and or I would be taken for a native uh, in our French, but we both speak the language uh, very well, and I think that's really all you have to achieve. So thank you for listening. Bye for now.